Watch out, it's the most evil man in the universe. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins Anti-Eternia He-Man. With the power of Hell's Skull, the fearsome He-Man overthrew Anti-Eternia using his unmatched strength. Doppelganger He-Man is doing things a little bit different. Before we get a closer look at Anti-Eternia He-Man, grabbing first the tape measure just to show you guys how tall the figure stands. By now, anyone who's been collecting this line already knows how tall these figures stand, but for those maybe new to collecting this line, first time doing this, the figure is 5 inches in height, or roughly, he's going to be 13 centimeters tall. Bringing now in a couple of He-Man figures for comparisons, here's what Anti-Eternia He-Man looks like next to version 2 He-Man. Decided to use version 2 simply just because from head to toe they are using the exact same mold. Plus 2 when it comes to displaying these figures now on the shelf, I've really done away with displaying these guys with version 1 head sculpts, at least for He-Man. The longer hair, I liked at one point, but I've now warmed up to more the idea of just displaying these guys like they did in the classic toy line with the shorter hair. This is what the two figures look like. And another comparison we can obviously make as well, another one that was posing as He-Man. Here's what he looks like next to Faker. Faker's very different in the sense that he was a robot trying to pose as the most powerful man in the universe. Not something you can easily do when your skin is blue and you've got orange armor. Anti-Eternia He-Man, though, isn't necessarily somebody that's posing as He-Man. He's actually a mirror universe He-Man from a much darker, eviler world of Eternia. Hmm, not sure if eviler is actually a word. Anyways, though, for the accessories to come in clue with Anti-Eternia He-Man, you get pretty much all the same things that we've already gotten with He-Man before. A shield, a power sword, and a battle axe. Starting first, the figure comes in clue with a battle shield. And just to compare these, as we're going to do with all the accessories, here's what it looks like next to the regular He-Man shield. I can't 100% say that this is the one that came in clue with the version 1 or version 2 He-Man. It could have even possibly come in clue with one of the battle pack He-Mans. But as you can see, exactly the same mold. Instead of the silver and this orangey red, they've instead decided to go with a midnight black. It clips the same way onto the figure's forearms, which I'll do more in a second. You get pretty much the exact same shield. And again, that same thing will follow suit with all the other accessories too. Here's the power sword that comes in clue with Anti-Eternia He-Man. Here's the power sword that comes in clue with regular He-Man. Same exact mold. They've decided to do away with again with the idea of doing the half swords and instead deciding to give us a fully intact sword from both the sides. It is missing a little guard on the side there as well. I love these swords. And then finally, the figure also comes in clue with the battle axe. And as we already did, here's what he looks like next to the battle axe here. The regular He-Man battle axe. Being again like this one does have a little bit of a glitter. I think I pulled this actually from battle armor He-Man. But you get the idea. It's the exact same battle axe. Any one of the accessories can fit into his hand, uh, although this hand right here has the gripping hand, so things like, for example, his battle axe, his battle axe right there will clip into his hand, or you can also do the exact same thing and take his power sword, and the power sword also fits into his hand. Now, I don't know if he actually has a, a power sword necessarily, or if maybe it's called something else. Uh, like the power sword, though, in, on the regular He-Man, you can also take it and holster it here on the back of his torso. Slides just into the back. And then, of course, when it comes to a shield, the shield, just grabbing it right now, has a little looplet on the back. That's going to fit around his hands. And then this part's going to clip around his forearm. So you can go ahead and just take this. And I always like to display it on this side here. Just clamp it around his forearm. Kind of want to really just take his fingers first and slide it into the loop. Just like that. And then clamp it into place. I always find when it comes to these, the gauntlets that they have, it always seems like something that's hard to get and get their hand in. But like I said, you can have He-Man clipped with the shield on his forearm. One thing we also forgot to mention here, at least I forgot to mention, his figure obviously comes in clue with a mini-comic too, which I really should have started the accessory end of this review with. In this case, Rulers of the Sun, Sun Man Rises. This is one, the notable wave, this is the notable wave being the fact that they've introduced now Sun Man into the actual Master Universe canon. I think it's really cool the fact that they've included that. And we will be looking at Sun Man in an upcoming video. But inside you can see that there's He-Man, he's battling what seems to be Horde Troopers, and then Skeletor and Clawful, because after all they're going to be introducing in the comics, the mini-comics, all the characters that make up that wave. So Clawful's in this, and of course anti eternity He-Man starts his way right here. You can see, I really like the darker color. I actually kind of hear in more, in more of the case here, it reads actually more like a dark gray, like a bluish gray instead of the black. 
but like just the color scheme here on Anti-Eternia He-Man looks really awesome, especially like this little image down below at the bottom panel. It looks like he wants to overthrow Skeletor, though. I'm not going to give it away, because obviously you guys will want to see this and read it for yourself. But then on the back, other characters advertise. He-Man and Skeletor always get thrown into these waves, but then Sun Man, Horde Trooper, Clawful, and Anti-Eternia He-Man, the one that we're looking at in this video. New for 2022. I'm a little blind on looking at these. So sorry for that. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and take the accessory now, his shield from his form. And we'll go ahead and remove his battle, his power sword too. The power sword always seems to be a case that sits really loose. You really want to have it as far down as you possibly can get it. But I do find sometimes it just feels like it sits really loose on these figures. Anyways, sliding that out of the way, getting a closer look at Ante Eternia He-Man. Short of the fact I do have what seems problems in his eyes. Not necessarily the fact that his pupils are white and outlined in red. That's the part I actually like. But it seems like, at least on mine, they were printed a little off from where they sculpted the eyes. I feel like they should be a little bit more centered. It results in kind of looking as if it's it's slipping off of his face. His eyes are slipping off of his face. I do like the way they've actually put the white coloring on the middle of his pupils. If they've just done a darker red, for example, matching the color of, of his hair, I think the eyes would have certainly been lost. But by adding the little drops of white really does give those eyes a lot of evilish looking personality. And of course, he's got white in the middle of his for his teeth there as well. Same exact head sculpt as the regular classic He-Man version 2. And again, just to bring in that He-Man, just so you can see the difference between the two. Not that this real, not that this He-Man really had prob no problems with his eyes. Like his eyes even are are an issue on my figure as well. They just can't get the eyes ever lined up properly to where the the molds are supposed to be. I think it's actually just going to be a little bit more centered. But yeah, I noticed that on evil like, anti eternity He-Man. I keep wanting to call him evil super, uh, evil evil Superman, evil He-Man. But yeah, the eyes are a little more wandered off to the side. Uh, the armor that he's wearing is exactly the same, except for the fact they've gone instead of the gray plastic, black plastic, instead of the darker burgundy red. We get kind of treated to this really nice orangey red, and it works really well. It's the same coloring, in fact, that they've actually used here for the gauntlets on his forearms, the top of his belt for his loincloth, and uh, it, that's about it. I mean, then there's a few little squares there, obviously, on the back. It's just a continuation of his armor as well. I could see some people not really wanting to pick up a figure like this, simply just seeing as a recolor of He-Man. I kind of like it, though. It reminds me, like, every character, well, not every character, but there's always, like, an evil doppelganger. We talk about Transformers, for example. There was Nemesis Prime. How many times did we then get a Nemesis Prime mold, where it was essentially just an Optimus Prime, molded and painted in black instead? Even characters in Star Trek had mirror universes as well. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I like this figure so much. While some may just look at this figure on a shelf and decide to pass on it altogether, I kind of like the charm of it. Having an all-black He-Man like this with glowing, pulsating eyes and have this orange armor really does work quite well, and it pops on the shelf as well. Now, this figure has also gotten released as well in those Master Universe minis. I didn't get that initially, and I think there was also a Tila version of that as well. I don't know how far down the rabbit hole I really want to get, like, anti-versions of these characters. Maybe I might just start and stop with He-Man. If they ever really say an anti-Eternia, Tila, will I, will I get that? Who am I kidding? I probably will, I will probably still get that anyways. Articulation is going to be the exact same on this figure as the He-Man we looked at before, so the head's going to rotate all the way around. You have the head looking down, looking up. And you can also have it rocking back and forth as well. In the same way, the articulation also works on the shoulders. There's a pin and socket joint here, so that allows the arms to rotate all the way around. Figure has no bicep swivel, but all the swiveling, all the swiveling happens here in the form. Uh, you can hinge the elbow down, which is a little more on the tighter side here in this figure. And you also rotate it back and forth too. He has rotations in the hands all the way around. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't decide to give him a swappable hand for this side. Simply just because this is the relaxed hand. They're generally, when it comes to these figures, always an alternate, at least for the deluxe figures. Comes with an alternate gripping hand that you could put on this side also as well. One thing I also didn't mention... I didn't know why I felt the need to really bring this into the review. But one other thing that's also included with these figures too... It's just to show you, yeah, you can pop the arms and the head. You can just pop the waist off. Can't remove the legs, but you can pop the waist off and you can pop the boots off too. And if you did want to use these arms for something else, then all the power too. You can do that as well. And simply like all of these, you just simply pop them off and mix and match these. I never really do it with all these figures. I seldom really show you guys in these reviews, but just to show you that you can mix and match and pull the parts off. For the rest of the articulation here on anti eternity He-Man, his waist rotates all the way around. And his legs, of course, can split out. You can take the legs and move them forward and back. Now, again, just to mention something I think that has just been abandoned altogether, you can also bring these knees up. 
if you want anti-eterna Kim to be more of a classic looking, like his vintage counterpart, like the way he's posed with his lower legs. I don't think we actually did get ourselves a vintage anti-eterna He-Man, but that's something you could certainly also do too. You can bend the legs or you can have the legs straight like that. He has a boot swivel, more for the way it's been assembled in the factory. You can also move the ankles back and forth this way, and you can also move the ankles this way as well. Get anti-eterna He-Man here on display. And once again, just for the comparison, we can bring in regular He-Man. I like it. I, I like it. I mean, I bought the, essentially the whole set at the same time. I bought it on eBay. But I think even if I had saw this guy in stores, I don't think I'd walk right by him. I think there's worse cases of just reusing the mold. Like that Stratos, for example. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if hindsight, if I would have gone back and picked up the more flesh-toned Stratos over the gray one. I kind of like the anti-Eternia He-Man here. Again, it reminds me of Nemesis He-Man. If only they could have actually called this guy Nemesis He-Man instead of anti-Eternia He-Man. But you get, you get the gist of it. It's He-Man from an alternate world, a mirror universe, if you will, where instead of being a heroic, he's actually quite evil. And it translates really well to a pretty cool looking figure. Done here all again, all in the black plastic. But between the black plastic, the glowing eyes, which are a little, little lopsided, a little off to the side for my liking, and also that bright orange color that they use for the gauntlets and his armor. It really makes for an interesting looking He-Man. One I certainly would not recommend passing on if you guys ever see this guy in your stores. Arms wide open. That's how I welcome a new evil doppelganger. Doppelgangers may not always appear to be mirror copies from the regular character that we know. Like a Data and Lore looked identical to one another until Data started acting a little strange. Not like his normal self. Yet Kid and Car, identical looking model cars. Although to be fair, Car is not a really great example because they ended up finding Car later on and painting his undercarriage, his underbelly, more like gray color scheme so you could tell the difference between the two cars. Okay, maybe that, maybe Car's not a great example. Sometimes the subtleties aren't as subtle. For example, you could have evil facial hair. Why do, why do we always have to add facial hair onto a character to make them evil? By that law, I should actually be the evil version of this reviewer. And maybe there's a clean shaven version of me somewhere that's a little bit nicer. And sometimes you even have, to, even to the more extreme, you have characters that are literally just a complete color scheme different from the original design. So you have like Black Convoy, or you have Nemesis Prime. That's just a black version of Optimus Prime. A backwards S and disfigured face marks the look of Bizarro. Or in a case of Anti-Eternia He-Man, it's He-Man, yes, but it's He-Man from a different version, a different reality. So in this case, instead of having his skin tone, he's all done here in black. And the figure, I gotta say, like, looks really good. Yes, it is just a reuse of the exact same mold, and it gave Mattel the opportunity just to re-release and rehash the same mold again. But, you know, in a case like this, that doesn't bother me at all. The black works extremely well, and though I was a little on the fence as to whether the burgundy would work as well with that orange color scheme, it is a little off, but it's off in a good way. That orange does pop quite nicely on the gauntlets that he has, the armor that he has on his torso, and just above his loincloth too. They probably could have, yes, given him a different accessory, but again, if he's going to be an evil version of He-Man, then it would make all the more sense to include all the same accessories that came included with that original He-Man before. For those who walk by this figure on the shelf, I say nay to you. Think about that for a second and realize how cool evil doppelgangers have been in the existence of any one of the heroes that have had an evil version of themselves, and then maybe that might correct and change your mind to why you may want to pick up this figure for yourself. I love this look, figure. So much so, am I even kind of considering getting another one of these so I can keep it sealed on card? Maybe for your video question for down below for this video, let me know your e favorite evil version of a character. I listed some of them in this video, but what's your evil version of a character? We could even say Faker, too, another good example. Although Faker was, a, was one that was posing as He-Man, I'm thinking, like, completely an evil version of that character. Let me know down below your favorite in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, why not hit it with a like? If you're loving the content and certainly want to stick around for more, because we are going to be looking at the rest of the Master Universe wave, including Sun Man. We will be looking at him in an upcoming video as well. But make sure you're hitting the subscribe button down below. Make sure you're turning on the bell notification. Make sure you're coming back, because evil version of this reviewer, who's currently got full facial hair, will be coming back with a lot more Master Universe reviews. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.